So I've had a few people ask me a couple questions about uh, my Tuscan pieces and where, where I get them and, and, and how they uh, how they came to be. So I'm going to do a real quick video about that. Uh, make a couple face plates and pour some molds. I don't um, buy stuff if I don't have to. And one of the things I, I that bothered me was like I, all of the the blood spitters I found didn't look right to me. So snowplow. So I took a dowel, um, inverted my sander, drilled a hole, and just shaped one. And it was good. It wasn't fantastic, but it was good. I liked it. Then I 3D printed another one when I had a... Pr this was before I had my printer. I made a mold. It's in that bin. Um, then I 3D printed them. And when I 3D printed them, I brought in a picture of Peter Diamond. It's, it's the one where he's got the, the bucket under his arm. Right? I brought in a, uh, a humanoid model. Scaled it to exactly his height. Oriented it in the same position, and then molded all of my face pieces off of that. So mine are as accurate as you can get without physically having the prop on you. It's the best I could do. So I had uh, eyes made, um, blood spitters, nose, tooth, and then horns. And then I made molds of all of it, right? I, I do all this on my own. I don't really... Um, you know, I don't have, have large accessory groups helping me out with what I do. I just do what I do. Um, the, the face plate, the pictures I've seen, it's a inside, it's a reverse, um, vacuum form of a Vader mask from a and yeah, from A&H, Star Wars at the time. Um, I can't find that picture again or else I'd post it. Uh, Corey from Wisconsin showed it to me and, and just all of this is done on the fly. None of this is professional. None of this is, is, um, it's done because I enjoy doing it. Kim wanted it. And when Kim wants something, I go out of my way to make it happen. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, I don't sell face plates or mask pieces really. Um, I, I make them primarily for the Midwest uh, Midwest Sandbox. Um, another snowplow. And this is all just stuff that I do on my own. Um, let me bring you in so you can see what I'm seeing, and um, we'll go over everything uh, step by each, and, and and show you where I'm at and how I do this stuff. So to make a Tuscan, I have um, blood spitters, nose tooth, horns, and I use a two-part mold for eyes. My eye mold is getting a little, uh, a little leaky. I may have to redo it soon. Um, whenever I'm pouring any of this, so I already have some, some pre-poured. When I, when I pour, I tend to, to bring out a couple molds, and when I pour extra, I have extra pieces. So all I really need, so I'm sending out two of these to a, a couple of friends. I need two eyes, and I believe that's it. So the rest of this is all going to go away. I'm also doing Karelian stuff, so I've got my uh, Karelian food capsules out. Oh, I need my eyes. What am I doing? I might leave... Nah, we'll get rid of the boot flare. Um, we'll do some compads. You know, pilot stuff, just for the fun of it, right? Um, I like sending out my compads. Um, those are going to be an interesting pour. But, I also have my, my face plate, right? This is just a big chunk of plaster. It's been shaped, molded, Things break off, I bondo new stuff on. Uh, 8 by 12, I normally do 8 by 10, but um, my sheets have been cut to 2 foot by 2 foot for the vacuum form. It's 
a noisy day today. So with a two foot square, you usually get a six at this size. Start with the pouring. I'll show you how I pour. First off, the resin I'm using, Smoothcast 300. This stuff is relatively bulletproof. It mixes uh, one to one by volume. Um, I tend to pour on something that I know it's not going to stick to because this will get everywhere because it is resin. Um, unfortunately, this resin's a little old, so we may be in for a couple of interesting surprises. Maybe not. These are horrible to mix in, by the way. They got these ridges, everything gets stuck in there. So we just dump, mix, and pour. This stuff has a work time of about five minutes, so we have to have to move quick. Pour nice and slow. I don't use a vacuum chamber. I would have much better results if I did. But that's another piece of equipment that I do not have. Enough of the fun stuff. Start with the compad. Couple of food capsules. Chest box piece. enough to really do anything with, but I can use a couple more horns. So we'll pour a set of horns. Sure about it. Oh yeah, what's interesting? What's fun? Just barely enough. Now we wait. In real time, it's been about five minutes. I'm just waiting for this part down here to whiten up. I like my compads to be curved. So I have a thing of just Morton salt covered in tape and then covered in packing tape. And when that gets to just the right consistency, I wrap it around here, tape it up, let it go the rest of the way, like that. Hmm. Does not seem to want to, uh, takes forever. Good enough. Roll the tape. I used to use rubber bands. Tape's kind of easier. for the goodness. So what I'm doing, forcing it to wrap around this cylinder. Gives just the right curve. At least I think so. There you go. Now I leave it for a good 20 minutes. I'll probably end up putting everything on this tray and moving the tray out of the way so I can work on the uh, the faceplate. So this is where we're at with the Tuscan faceplate. 
I have this big mold. Form, a big form. Some gloves, and I have a heat gun. I can easily take it over to my vacuum form and just, and be done. I don't like that process. Um, every test can I make is slightly different. Every test can I make is unique. And, and I'm really fond of that. This process lets me meet the Tuscan as he's being made, right? And, and for a builder, that's an interesting thing. So all I do is I take this piece of plastic, put the X over the mouth, I heat it up and I push it until it's in shape. I'm going to show you that, and I'm going to show you that pretty quick. Because this is not what I would consider a fast process. But it's kind of an enjoyable one. So, on with the montage. Face plates are done. Now for my favorite part, demolding. I don't have my bin of stuff, so I'll just have to go on the table. A couple of buttons for chest boxes. Save the eyes for last. This one's kind of neat. None of this is ever easy. But it is fun. Come on, you. It's the end of Faith's lightsaber. She wanted a crystal. I have a clear one. Figured having a solid one would be kind of entertaining too. Um, horns. Had I thought ahead when I did these, I would have put sprues on the ends because that would probably make this whole process just a little easier. But I'm not a professional, just an amateur. Just a really good amateur. Come on. There's one. These haven't fully cured yet. Spend about half an hour. So they're good enough that they're not gonna do anything weird. But they can still distort. Like I said, 300, it's relatively bulletproof. I, I absolutely love that stuff. When color doesn't matter, it's, it's, it's my go-to. This needs to be cut down because it's a little knobby-knobby for the chest box. Had a little leakage, bound to happen. These are neat. Come on. These are food capsules for a Carillion X-Wing pilot. They have a little Corsac symbol on the end. Had those 3D printed in resin and then made molds of. Those are fun to model. So I tend to make a bunch of them. That way whenever I make a Corsac pilot, they have unique and interesting uh, food capsules. Little touches. Hmm, an air bubble. 
I'll have to cut that off later. Compad, looks pretty cool. I like it. It's gonna also gonna be painted Corsac and sent with the Corsac. Now for the thing everybody wants to see. The eyes. annoying to unmold because they've got the slits already in them. Looks like I don't have any real serious air bubbles. If I do I could mix up another little batch of 300 and just put drops here and there to fill it in. One eye. That came up pretty easy. I really should redo the molds on these. Probably will sooner than later. That's one of those, yeah, when do I feel like dropping a decent chunk of change on rebound 25? Don't let anybody tell you that this is a professional outfit. Any of this stuff we're doing. None of it's, none of it, nobody knows what they're doing really. We're all just messing around. Even a Novos doesn't quite know what they're doing. I know, right? it ain't so it's true so this is horrible to do to the mold but I don't care like I said I have to redo these soon flashing and easily cut with a razor blade. I have witness marks in the top so I know exactly where they're supposed to set. Next time I do them I might make this end a little bigger with more of a obtuse angle so uh, I know exactly where it goes instead of trying to guess. So that is how I make Tuscan face pieces right? I have no idea what thickness this plastic is. It's hips, it's high impact polystyrene. Um, I don't know. I don't think it really matters. Once it's covered in wraps and cloth and pieces, it's fine. Um, push comes to shove, you can add fiberglass to reinforce if you're really worried about it. Face pieces get painted and we went, we went over that in the Tuscan video. But this is just a real quick addendum. I thought it would be interesting to show people how these things are made and I do not offer kits, right? If I were to actually sit down and calculate how much my time, effort, and, and I'd, I'd price everybody out of the market. There's, there's no point in that. So if you are interested in something like that, contact other makers. Um, see if somebody has a mold, because like I know Wisconsin has molds. I know we do it for, the, for Illinois. Um, Find out what's going on. Contact other other makers in your area. If you're interested in the Tuscan, join the uh, the Rebel Legion. Find out what your base is, your local base. Um, join the 501st. See uh, what, what your garrison is. Contact them. Talk to them. See who, who does what. Not only do you need to contact your, your local chapters, if, if that's the route you're going, because they have resources, but these are also the people you're going to be trooping with. These are also the people you're going to be spending time with. Um, and had I known that, I would have joined the Legion long ago. I absolutely love everyone in my garrison. Well, just about. So, again, this is how I do these. Go walk in single file and f join the Legion. I'll see you next time.